Hi, Prince and Princesses. I'm Auntie Kay, and this is our children's Sabbath school program. And guess what? You are welcome to come along with me. Hello, Prince and Princesses. You know the fact that I could actually say hello, Prince and Princesses, means that my voice is back. I was out last week and I was sick and I promise you, you could not hear a word coming from my mouth, but I'm so thankful for all of your prayers. Thankful that all of you are like, you know what, Auntie K, we're praying for your healing and I am healed. So that means I'm back today and we are on lesson six. And today we are looking at God's mirror image. Now, before we go any further, before I pray, before we have the welcome, you have this time to go and get your quarterlies because I know some of you like to follow along. So at this time, go and get those quarterlies. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who already have your quarterlies, let us close our eyes for it's prayer time. Before I even say that, oh, I'm happy that you are here with me. Welcome to the Auntie Kay Children's Sabbath School program. Let us pray. This is the day, O oh Lord, that you have made, and may we always find reasons to rejoice in it. The blessing of life, the blessing of learning about you, the blessing of fellowshipping with others as we learn about you. Father, there are so many reasons in which we can give you thanks for this day. Father, Lesson 6 is talking about your mirror image, and may we learn and may we come to realize that we were made in your image. And as we were made in your image, that means we are very special to you. Thank you for the hearts that will be changed. Thank you for the lessons that will be learned. And thank you for the fact that prince and princesses will take this message that we will learn today and share it with others. Thank you for hearing this prayer, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ah, lesson six, God's mirror image. At this time, we know we have to be welcomed before we dive <laughs> more into our program. So, let's be welcomed. Hello and welcome to Auntie Kay's Children's South School program where Prince and Princesses all around the world get to enjoy and learn about the love of God. Through sign language, messages with Princess Malloray, character teachers from Nails Made to Nuggets, Sing Along Time, Mary Versus, Story Hill with Princess Da Vincia, Test Your Knowledge with Quiz Kids, Hashtag Puzzle Fun, Enjoy Object Lessons with Auntie Patty Pat, Bible Questions with Ask Pass Vanessa, Great Crafty Crafts and Good Yummy Goodness with the Girls Tasty Treats. So, no matter where you're living on this great big planet, you are welcome to participate, enjoy and share. Yes, we live far and wide, but God's love connects us. No matter how you look, where you're from, the color of your skin, or even your culture, welcome! Welcome, welcome, yes, welcome mm -hmm, to Lesson 6. And all my prince and princesses and the bigger ones, you too, are always welcomed. At this time, we're going to head on over to see how Princess Marla Ray, she's going to sign our message sign of the day. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Let's sign together. We praise God for creating us. Thank you so much, Princess Marla Ray. We praise God for creating us. Yes, that is our message sign of the day. We thank God for creating us in His image. Mm -hmm. And the fact that He has created us in His image, which means we have mouths to sing praises, mouths to share His gospel, hands to clap, shoulders to move, that means it's now time for a sing-along time where we're going to praise God through all of our being at this time. It's sing-along time. It's sing-along time. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he showed love to everyone. He lived his life the way that God Always would like things done as Jesus hung upon the cross he called to his God above Father forgive what they have done oh what perfect love he loves me he loves me no matter what I do he loves me he loves me and 
Jesus loves you too. He loves me, he loves me, that's why I want to live for Jesus, for he loves me so to him my life I give. Yes, Jesus will forgive us too, no matter what we've done. But we must believe that He really is God's Son. Receive His love into your heart. You'll know why Jesus came. You'll know His love more every day. Jesus, praise your name. He loves me, He loves me, no matter what I do. He loves me, He loves me, and Jesus loves you too. He loves me, He loves me, that's why I want to live. For Jesus, for He loves me so to Him my life I give.
Yes, all of us, our eyes, our ears, our nose, our mouths, our hands, all of us, every part of us, we can use it to praise our Heavenly Father because He has created us in His image. Ah, praise and worship was beautiful. And now it's time to head on over to our Nature Nuggets with Niall. Hi guys, I'm here at the Freshwater Lake and I was thinking about the national bird of Antigua, the magnificent frigate bird. Here's what it can teach us. Number one, be your best. Did you know that when this bird is attracting a female during the breeding season, its red throat pouches like a balloon? It uses this as a means of attracting the targets. What do you do to make a good impression on others? Whatever you do, be your best. Number two, work together. The magnificent frigate bird nests in colonies and work together for the welfare of everyone. Do you work well with others? I hope you do. Work together. Number three, location is everything. Do you know that where you live determines a lot of things? The magnificent frigate bird lives on ocean, coasts, and islands at different times. Where you are usually determines your behavior. Can you believe it? The frigate bird is such an amazing character teacher. God didn't only create us, but he created plants, he created animals, he created this world. And I just want to say thank you to Niall for sharing with us nature nuggets that we could use to learn more about God and learn about how our characters could be better. Thank you so much, Prince Niall. And now it's time for us to hear our memory verse for lesson six. <laughs> Hi, my name is Israel. I'm from Barbados. Today's memory verse is taken from Genesis 1, verse 27. God created mankind in his own image, male and female. He created them all. Happy Sabbath! Thank you so much, Princess, for sharing with us our memory verse taken from Genesis 1 and verse 27. And now we're going to head on over to another princess, and that's Princess Davincia with story time as she reads for us our story under the title, God's Mirror Image. It's story time with me, Princess Davincia. Hi, boys and girls. It's story time. God's mirror image. All week, God had been busy creating a lovely world. It was the sixth day and he had finished creating all the animals. Then he lovingly formed man out of the fresh earth. I can imagine that for a moment. He just looked at it smiling at the thought of the wonderful times they would share together. Oh my dear Adam, Adam, God may have said, how I love you. Then God breathed his breath of life into the form he had made. Instantly, Adam's chest began to move up and down as his lungs inhaled the fresh, clean air. Smiling into his creator's face, Adam sat up. Hello, Lord, he might have said. God showed Adam all around his beautiful garden home. Adam, you may name the animals. Adam grinned as he looked around. What a fun job. He got started right away. Did you imagine? He probably said, Mm, lion, ant, elephant, or maybe that one's a tiger because it has stripes. Let's continue. Adam grinned as he looked around. 
What a fun job! He st got started right away, but as he worked, he noticed that every animal God had created a had a mate. Was there a mate for him? Hmm. Do you think God created a mate for him? I think so. God caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep, and while Adam was sleeping, God took one of his ribs and formed it into a beautiful woman out of the soft earth. When Adam woke up and saw his wife, he was filled with love. God blessed the first wife and husband. They spent their very first whole day together, enjoying God's company. God gave them the Sabbath as a special gift. They loved the garden home God had made for them. Each evening, they would walk together in the garden and talk with Him. It was such a wonderful time. They couldn't wait to be with God. One sad day, however, Adam and Eve made a wrong choice. They chose to listen to Satan, and God had told them they could eat of every tree in the garden except one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The happy couple didn't want any part of that, but unfortunately, Eve ate the fruit that the serpent, who was really Satan, offered her. Then she shared it with Adam. Immediately, instead of wanting to be with God, they felt afraid and hid from Him. But God still loved him. He did not stop loving them because they did the wrong thing. He had made them in His image, and He would always love them. Because Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they had to leave their garden home. No longer could they meet God and walk with Him in the evenings. But God loved them so much that He made a special plan so that one day they could live with Him again. God loves us, and He wants us to live with Him too. Boys and girls, do you know what that special plan is? That special plan is for God to come back down and to save all of us from sin. And He's already done that. So it's only for us to listen to His Ten Commandments and all of His rules in the Bible and even in our quarterly. So, boys and girls, I want you to listen and repeat after me. I will listen to all of God's rules because I want to go to heaven with Him. Happy Sabbath! I'm Princess Davincia, and thank you for joining me for story time. Thank you so much, Princess Davincia, for reading our story for us. And my prayer is that we were truly listening because there were so many important messages, so many important lessons that we could have learned in that story. One of the lessons that I learned is that God never stopped loving Adam and Eve, although they sinned. Yes, He never stopped loving them. And if He never stopped loving them, He does the same with us. He loves us. Even when we make mistakes, even when we feel that what we would have done is so bad, and, and the thing is, it is bad, but that does not disconnect us from the love of our Heavenly Father. He loves us through giving us His forgiveness, showing us mercy, and also giving to us grace. He loves us oh so much. Despite us being sinful and doing things that we shouldn't, because He loves us and we love Him, we can go to Him out of love asking for His forgiveness and He never stops loving us. So that's what I would have taken from this very important message. And guess what? You've heard what I've learned. Now it's time for us to hear from Thim and Nathan as they're going to share with us what they would have learned. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello, everyone. Okay, can you tell me what was the story this week very shortly? 
Mm, about that, what was it about? Adam, when God made him, he was the first human in the entire world. And then Adam was so lonely, so God took a rip out of his set and made Eve. And what happened next? Um, is that they disobeyed. They disobeyed and they, they get out and they were sent out of the Garden of Eden. So what did you learn from that story? Mm -hmm. I learned from that story that God loves us that because he made us. Okay. Yeah, I, I learned that we should not disobey. Okay, so that's why you want to share with the boys and girls? Yes. yes. Bye. Thank you so much, Thema and Nathan, for sharing with us what you would have learned also from our story, God's Mirror Image. And you know, I want to hear from all of you, prince and princesses, as you share with me what you would have learned from our stories every week. You can send me an email at Auntie K, that's A U N T Y K C S S L at Gmail. That's a mouthful. So thankfully, it's written right here for us to see it. I would love to hear as you share with me also what you would have learned from our stories every week. Now it's time for us to head on over to Auntie Patty Pat as she's going to share with us through an object lesson, a message and a lesson that she would have also learned from this story. Hey boys and girls, how are you doing today? Mm, can you tell what's going to happen now? I'm going to enjoy a sumptuous breakfast. This breakfast wasn't made by me. See how lovely it looks? This was made by my darling husband. And he knows that I love him when I tell him thanks for creating such a beautiful, tasty breakfast for me. Mmm, mm-hmm. He didn't have to do it, but I like it. Now, that's the same way we worship God when we tell him thanks for the beautiful world he has created. When was the last time you told God thanks for creating the lovely world? Worship him today by telling him thanks. And I'm going to tell my husband thanks. Mm, thank you for breakfast, baby. Bye, boys and girls. Remember to thank God for creating his beautiful world. Thank you so much, Auntie Patty Pat. Thank you, Auntie Patty Pat. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sharing your great object lessons with us as to how we can also learn lessons from our story through whatever object it is that you illustrate the message with. That's a gift you have, and I'm so thankful that you're using it for God. Thank you so much again, Aunt Patty Pat. And now, it's time for us to head on over to Cousin Perry, our quiz master. Hey boys and girls, let's see if you were paying attention during this week's story. Our first question, how did Adam come to life? Was it from his breath, from God's breath, or the air in the garden? It was from God's breath. Who gave the animals their names? Was it God, Adam, or Eve? It was Adam. God told Adam and Eve they could eat from every tree. Is the answer true or false? The answer is false. Our last question. 
Adam and Eve were able to live in the garden after they sinned. Is the answer true or false? The answer is false. Thank you guys so much for participating in this week's Quiz Kids. Thank you so much, Cousin Perry, with Quiz Kids. I'm loving Quiz Kids. I am, again, thank you so much. And now let's head on over to Hashtag Puzzle Fun. Hey, <laughs> Hashtag Puzzle Fun is coming up right now. Creation of Humans Puzzle Directions Trace each line from the letter to a box. Fill in the letter for that box. Our first box is the letter I. Then we have A, followed by the letter M. Then we have another A. We have the letter C. Then we're going to have the letter H. Tracing that one, it leads us to the letter I, then to the letter L, followed by the letter D. Down on this next line, our first letter in that box is going to be the letter O, followed by the letter F, and then we're going to have hmm, G, then O, and then D, and it spells I am a child of God. Thank you for helping me with my creation of humans puzzle. Yep, it's that time in the program where we get to hear what Bible question will be asked and how Pastor NASA is going to answer it. It's now time for... Ask Pastor NASA! Hi, Pastor NASA. My name is Eden Sane Pyle, and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. And my question is, why did Peter fall into the water when he was walking on water? Hey, thank you so much for that question. It's a really good one. Well, you know, in the book of Matthew chapter 14 and verse 27, the Bible says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. You see, boys and girls, walking on water is not something people can ordinarily do. But Peter was able to do it because Jesus told him to come and walk on the water. And guess what? Peter was walking on the water, but then he got afraid and then he began to sink. But guess what? Jesus was right there to rescue him and pick him back up. You see, boys and girls, sometimes Jesus may ask you to do some things and you may be afraid. But don't worry, Jesus will be right there to rescue you and save you so that you can do what he called you to do. I want to do what Jesus called me to do. How about you? Then let's give our lives to him today. And Jesus is going to power you up so that you can do amazing things. See you next time. Thank you, my princess. Thank you, Pastor Nessa, for uh, being here to ask that question and also for being here to answer it. Thank you so much. Keep those questions coming. Absolutely. And now let's head on over to Crafty Craft Corner with Aunt Polly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Crafty Crafty Corner with Aunt Polly. <laughs> let's go. <laughs>
thank you, Aunt Polly. Thank you, Aunt Polly. Thank you, Aunt Polly. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Aunt Polly, for another great craft in which we could use to remember our story being made in the image of God. And the heart represents the love that God has for us. Thank you, Aunt Polly. And now, after Crafty Craft Corner, we're going to head on over to Mission Story Street with Aunt Reese. Feliz Sabado, boys and girls. This is how we say Happy Sabbath in Portuguese, the language spoken in Portugal, where this week's story comes from. The title of this week's mission story is Crying at School. Have you ever had one of those experiences where you were dropped off to school and you were just bawling your eyes out? Four-year-old George started crying when mother dropped him off at preschool on the Portuguese island of Madeira. Wah! George wailed. Mother couldn't understand why her little boy was crying. This was not George's first day of preschool. He had started going to the preschool a few days earlier and he had not cried. But now he opened his little mouth and bawled. Wah! George cried. He made it clear that he didn't like the preschool. Back at home, mother didn't know what to do. Father didn't know what to do and grandmother didn't know what to do. A few days later, mother and father traveled to Fangshai, the biggest city on the island, to carry out some errands, and George went with them. As the family went about their business, mother noticed a neat school surrounded by a fence with a metal gate. Look, mother said to father, let's see if they will accept George. Mother and father and George walked through the open gate. The moment that George stepped into the school grounds, he exclaimed, I like this school. Then he saw other children playing on a playground. I don't want to go to the other school, he said. He looked up at mother and father with great determination on his tiny face. Stamping his feet on the ground, he yelled, I don't want to go to the other school. A teacher came out of the school building and mother told her about the preschool that George didn't like. George could go to this school, teacher said. The teacher introduced the family to the school chaplain, Antonio. Chaplain Antonio was a very kind man. He said the school belonged to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and he took the family on a tour. He showed them the cafeteria where children ate vegetarian food, and he showed them classrooms. On a classroom wall, mother saw, a children, saw children's drawings from the life of Jesus. Immediately, she knew that this was the right school for George. George jumped for joy when he learned that he could go to the Adventist school. From the first day, he loved going to the school. Never did he cry or throw a tantrum. After a while, mother learned that a church met on the second floor of the school. She was curious and George's teacher invited her to come to prayer meeting on Wednesday evening. Mother went with George and loved it. She and George returned the next Wednesday and the next. Then father started to go to the prayer meetings as well. After a while, mother and father gave their hearts to Jesus and were baptized. Then George's grandmother gave her heart to Jesus and was baptized. When George was 12, he also gave his heart to Jesus and was baptized. Praise God. Today, he plays the piano, guitar, and ukulele in church on Sabbath. To this day, Mother doesn't understand why George cried at the first preschool, but was happy at the Adventist school. Father doesn't understand why either, and grandmother didn't understand. Not even George understands what happened. But one thing is clear, because George went to the Adventist school, his life and the life of his family changed completely. I'm very happy to be an Adventist, George says. Boys and girls, this quarter, your 13th Sabbath offering will help open a new Seventh-day Adventist elementary school in Portugal so other children's lives can be changed by the power of God. Thank you for planning a generous offering. Feliz Sabado, boys and girls! Thank you so much, Aunt Reese, for our mission story for today. And another sweet treat is coming up right now with Takel's Tasty Treats.
This month, we will be exploring some of the wonderful flavors from Belize. Today, we will be making stewed chicken. Let's get started. Our ingredients for today include lime juice, ricardo, garlic, seasoning, olive oil, parsley, cilantro, basil, a bay leaf, onions, tomato, chicken pieces, and chicken broth. You will also be needing a Dutch pot and a spoon. Season your chicken using your seasoning and lime juice. Cook your chicken in heated oil for 2-3 to three minutes per side. Stir in your onion, garlic, and bay leaf and cook for an additional 2 minutes. Stir in your remaining ingredients. Cover and cook until your chicken is tender, then serve. Whenever family and friends see me, comments are always made about who I look like. Regardless of what others think, I am thankful knowing that God made me and that I look like Him. Time to dig in! Yummy, yummy. I mean, y'all should know by now I'm going to sing that yummy, yummy in my tummy because Princess Dekel, she comes every week with those sweet treats that we could make at home, but that she also uses to inject some word of encouragement about our story. Thank you so much. So now we honestly know that we could cook and still share Jesus at the same time. Thank you so much, Princess Tekel. Now, yes, as I said, we were on lesson six and we were looking at God's mirror image and our message was, we praise God for creating us. That's a beautiful message because we were made in his image. Until next week, Sabbath. Remember, whenever you look in the mirror, whose image were you made in? God's image and that makes you extra extra special and remember that our heavenly father he loves us oh so much through the love of forgiveness and grace and sending his son jesus to die for all of us that's love mm -hmm. and talking about love i love all of you but our heavenly father we know by now he loves us oh so 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 much more and he would like for us to invite him into our hearts so that we could share his love with others until next week we cannot end without praying but remember i love you Mwah. let's end with the lord's prayer our father in heaven how be my name thou kingdom come thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Happy Sabbath, everyone.